Um, speaking of both sides in the situation, uh, the Washington Post editorial board has a new take on the Chilean proposed constitution. Oh, man. I mean, last time Americans proposed the constitution for Chile, things were great, if you remember. I mean, it was so sick, so sweet. Uh, people were thrown off helicopters. People go on helicopter rides and shit, you know? It's, it's tight. Super tight. Super fucking tight. Now, now, I'll just say it like this. Obviously, uh, the Chilean constitution is still going to be voted on. Or has it been voted on already? Oh, they have. They've uh, rejected it. Okay. Um, but regardless of what the people of Chile have to say about their new constitution, I have to, I have to mention something here. Why, does Ameri why do Americans feel the need to have a say here? Oh, what? Well, turns out lithium is a key input in batteries that run millions of laptops and upon which the United States is basing its electrified automotive future. Chile sits atop the world's largest lithium reserves. It produced about 25% of the world's commercial supply in 2020. That's reason enough to pay attention to Chile's impending uh, September 4th referendum on a proposed new constitution. It could recast the legal framework for mining. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. What was in it? In a single ballot, Chileans will decide whether they want legal abortion, universal public health care, gender parity in government, empowered labor unions, greater autonomy for indigenous groups, rights for animals and nature, and constitutional rights to housing, education, retirement benefits, internet access, clean air, water, sanitation, and care from birth to death. How devastating. Now, of course, people of Chile have voted overwhelmingly to reject this proposed leftist constitution and the, the right-wing media in America, which is insanely reactionary when it comes down to, uh, when it comes to especially international affairs. It's super reactionary when it comes to American affairs too. But I'll tell you something. There is no better way to see how openly, how openly they fucking want to kill, hate, uh, shit on leftists and leftist values than when they're talking about uh, countries that are making an effort, countries that are uh, changing the tide, countries that are actually electing leftist leaders. Now remember, if you think the BBC is incredibly woke or whatever, remember the last fucking time they had this election in Chile and one of the random people that they decided to interview uh, had a weird last name that you might have heard before? That's right. The BBC turned around and interviewed uh, when, when Chile was uh, deciding between uh, the, the current left-wing, uh, President Gabriel Boric, against uh, some fucking uh, right-wing psychopath, BBC went and interviewed someone. His last name was Pinochet. Turns out it was the, grand, it was the grandson of, of, of Pinochet. I mean, that's crazy, man. That's wild. What the fuck are you doing? No, the fuck they didn't, lol. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. And that, no, it wasn't a coincidence, dude. Do you guys not remember this? What the fuck? Chile has elected. I wonder if they kept it in this one. Up in a free. A former dictator, Augusto Pinochet. Paz Marquez is 18. It's not in this one. Uh, it's not in this coverage, but yeah, they did. Uh, I, I have it. Like, I have the... Uh... Thank you, BBC News, for finding these everyday Chilean voters to discuss whether Chileans really want the socialist leader they uh, just elected. And yes, they are related. Gonzalo Pinochet. <laughs> I mean, what do you want? There it is, dude. There it fucking is. A distant cousin of the former dictator disagrees. Oh, distant cousin. Sorry. That population is something really, really bad that's been happening in our in, 
in our continent. God. So, you know, good stuff. Zoomer chatters immediately turn to liberal fuckwoods when presented with facts they cannot accept. Yeah, we already covered this. We already, I already looked at this. I already told you. So, uh, do you know about how the Ford Motor Company was involved? No. You got it mixed up with Mussolini's granddaughter in Italy? No, I thought it was the, I, I knew it was a relative. I just uh, just remember because related 100% you agree. Wait, what? Not only is he related, but he's voting for a fucking related party. Cast itself was very much, very much on board with it, uh, with with the with that similar platform. Not only that, but also, yeah, they they fucking interviewed a, a relative of Pinochet. And they interviewed him because he was in support of cast. So, yes. Um, apparently, disinfo played a major role in this, by the way. Here's John Schwartz, Schwartz from in The Intercept. The proposed new Chilean constitution began the year with majority support, which then crumbled as the disinformation specialists got to work and rumors spread that it would legalize abortion up to the moment of birth, allowing people's homes to be confiscated, etc., the Chilean right spread preposterous lies about the proposed new constitution, but they never said it would mandate litter boxes in elementary schools for furry children, which shows how far uh, they are behind the U.S. right. Yeah. It fucking popped off, and then it fell off of a cliff when... Uh, it, it popped off, and then it fucking fell off of a cliff when, you know when people just came out of the gates swinging against it. This information is the wave, baby. It's the name of the goddamn game. It's, uh, it's, and it's especially easy to, it's especially easy to tag leftist uh, leaders and leftist platforms with this kind of misinformation because we have an inherently reactionary, we have an inherently reactionary media across the board because the media plays a fundamental role in ensuring the continuation of the capitalist infrastructure to normalize the harm that you experience under it and ensure that uh, the, the system continues. And yes, that system oftentimes will turn to fascism as a mechanism of control like it did with Pinochet, like it did with Hitler, like it did with Mussolini, regardless of uh, their origination or their origin points or their original ideologies, fascism is used as a mechanism of control when, uh, when there is too much trade unionist talk, when there's too much communist talk, when there's too much organizing, when the working class is getting together, when the working class is getting together and starting to make demands and actually uh, creating mechanisms of pushback, mechanisms of feedback, all of a sudden, boom, you have... Uh, a, a more authoritarian, fascist uh, means of control, uh, and, and, uh, and the media will absolutely back that candidate, always. Now to Chile, where voters have overwhelmingly rejected a progressive new constitution in a referendum. The proposed constitution was aimed at boosting the rights of indigenous people and women. It would have been replaced, uh, or would have replaced rather, the one adopting, adopted during the Pinochet era. Chile's current president has vowed to press ahead with efforts to overhaul the constitution. More than 60% of people who cast their ballots voted against the rewrite. Victory for the no camp. Chilean voters rejected the proposed new constitution by a far wider margin than polls predicted. They said no to what would have been one of the most progressive constitutions in the world, with a focus on social welfare, gender equality, environmental protection and indigenous rights. It is a really surprising triumph, and that means Chile is a country that rejects communism, Marxism, and the attempt of communism to seize power. At Santiago's emblematic Italy Square... 
they're they're technically celebrating and i can't i don't have a lot of time to get deeper into this right now but um they're technically celebrating a constitution that was basically written by some of the worst fucking neoliberal uh weirdos in america they're so incredibly cucked um and from what i understand some of the poorest neighborhoods were also on board with not changing the constitution um which is really sad because unfortunately the the people the those who are slated to benefit the most from leftist positions oftentimes are the ones who are the most malleable and easily persuaded by disinformation because they don't have uh a strong social support a strong social safety net strong education uh strong levels of literacy all problems that would be solved with ironically the leftist constitution um and it happens in every it happens in every part of our lives i mean west virginia is a, a is a solid analog to this i think if you want to think about it like that a lot of you always ask like why are people in west virginia voting republican like it's plus 35 trump state it doesn't make sense these people are so poor it's one of the poorest states in america well they're that way because uh because it's the government has left them behind um and also that creates uh that creates an easy easy opportunity to you know that creates an easy opportunity to to uh, persuade people opposing uh, in the opposing direction there's disappointment for backers of the new constitution after strong initial support, polls showed the Yes campaign losing momentum in recent weeks, with voters worried about market instability and how to pay for new benefits. Observers also point to a disinformation campaign. Leftist President Boric is vowing to go back to the drawing board. I make an honest appeal to all political forces to put Chile ahead of any differences they may have and to agree as soon as possible on the deadlines and parameters of a new constitutional process. For now, Chile is left with the 1980 constitution drawn up under the dictatorship of Augusto Pinochet. Center left and right wing... Like, can you imagine your country gets fucking on 9-11 nonetheless? A country, your country has an American-backed coup d'etat, okay? You're democratically... Your democratically voted on socialist president kills himself, okay, in the process. A dictator is planted. And the Constitution is written by Americans, okay, by the Chicago boys specifically, all right? And then finally, so many years later, so many years later, nearly fucking half a century, half a century later, you have, uh, you've overcome that. As a consequence of neoliberal austerity, basically privatizing water and, and uh, ruining transportation and making people's lives miserable and a and, uh, year-long year -long effort of, a, uh, you know, years-long effort of, of uh, younger uh, generations rising up against the government, getting fucking owned, getting brutalized, getting beaten down. You uh, elect a left, you, you elect a left candidate for the first time ever in this country, okay? And then he comes up with a new constitution, one that is going to be, be beneficial for the Chileans. And boom. They say, no, we want to keep that fucking American written constitution. It's just so cucked. It's not that simple. It wasn't a good constitution. I mean, things I've said, uh, things I've read in it seem great. Things that we have looked at here on this broadcast with respect to the, the, the cliff notes seem fine. parties that supported the no campaign but one thing that we can i think all agree on especially if you're in this community is that uh, the previous one is not good have agreed to negotiate to prepare a new text 
For more, let's bring in Miriam Gak, uh, our Latin America expert in Bonn. Miriam, the new constitution is regarded as more, well, what would have been the new constitution uh, was regarded as more progressive and inclusive. Why have people voted against it? Yes, Terry, would have been the most, one of the most progressive constitutions in the world, as you said. I think it might be that uh, this constitution was even too progressive. Chile is considered a very conservative country, um, which you can see in even if they have a left government, a left uh, president, parliament, congress is dominated by the right-wing forces. And the exception was this constitutional convention, which, which was elected uh, in May 2021, with a vast majority of left civil society representatives and the conservative parties didn't even reach a third of the uh, seats in this convention. So this kind of um, promoted a mistrust in the text and the work of the Constitutional Convention also was uh, looked at with very critic eyes and they also produced uh, some negative headlines. So I think there was, um, it was maybe a too big step ahead uh, to transform Chile into a new country, unfortunately. Uh a big step and a, and a big document. I mean, the Constitution is, is hugely complicated. How well informed was the population about the details of this new Constitution? Were voters subjected to much misinformation? <laughs> Indeed, they were. Uh, the conservative parties and, and those who uh, opposed to this new project, really, uh, they ran a massive campaign on social media with uh, fake news, uh, misinformation uh, and misinterpretation of what the uh, Constitution proposed. Let's take some examples. For example, uh, you mentioned uh, the abortion was supposed to be legalized by this new Constitution. The opponents to the new Constitution made out of this that abortion would be legalized up to the ninth month of pregnancy in Chile, which is definitely false. Um, also, they argued that private property would be uh, forbidden and people would get uh, would be expropriated by their private homes, for example. Um, even things like the national anthem and the national flag would be abolished. So there was a lot of misinformation and people were targeted by social media. Uh, there is a deep mistrust in Chile in both political institutions like parties, but also in traditional media. And ironically, it was really traditional media and state bodies like the um yeah the government for example who how does such lowbrow disinfo work dude people are stupid man people are stupid even the most educated even the most like media trained person will often be duped because cognitive biases are are really 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 powerful we all have biases and overlooking said biases is a difficult endeavor in and of itself but it's certainly uh it's it's you know, certainly much easier to use lowbrow misinformation to get people on board with like uh, idiotic agendas. To run an information campaign to really make people familiar with the text, but the text itself with 70, 178 pages is way too long to really understand it. Miriam, thank you very much. That was I mean, there's more on it. There, There is uh, more stuff on it, but unfortunately I'm not going to be able to get to that because I have to go. Uh, I am going to... I am uh, going to uh, leave now to go to shit camp and uh, we're going to a campsite and it's fucking hot as titties and I, I got to get ready and we'll be live at shit camp later tonight. So I just, like I said, I want to do a short stream, cover a couple news stories, you know, give, uh, have, you know, uh, I'm not going to rate anyone yet. No, uh, it will be. It will be uh, later on Cutie. I think Cutie's channel will be Cutie Cinderella's channel will be the first channel um, that uh, Shit Camp will be on. That's the opener. Uh, if you want to see the schedule, it's shitcamp.live slash schedule. Here it is. Uh, yeah, the, the starting ceremony is at 7 p.m. That's when the opening ceremony is going to start. It will be at uh, uh, Cutie's channel. And then tomorrow I will be streaming uh, a scavenger hunt. I don't know who I'm going to be going up against because it was supposed to be like co-stream between me and XQC, but that's not happening anymore. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to take my vitamins and uh, I'm going to run the last three minute ad break here. And also, I do have a desktop set up. I do have a desktop set up. 
at shit camp. So I'm going to try to do news coverage when I'm there as well. Okay. So yeah. Um, all right. That's it. And I'll see you on the other side, folks. Yes, a tent desktop. No, we're in fucking cabins, man. We're not in a tent. Not like that. Okay. Super short and sweet today. Here you go. I'll see you in a little bit, all right?